Of the many methods for making dental radiographs, one of the best is using a film holder. Film holders are recommended by the American Dental Association, the American Academy of Oral and Maxillofacial Radiology, and many other professional organizations. With film holders, the radiographic image is more accurately projected. Retakes are usually reduced because the film holder serves as a guide in the correct alignment of the film and the x-ray machine. Using film holders, we make higher quality images using less radiation. This all translates into better care for our patients. Although a wide variety of intraoral film holders are available, the RIN Extension Cone Paralleling, or XCP film holder, is the most commonly used. This film holder is versatile. It can be used for most patients and in many different clinical settings. It assures consistent film placement and projection angles, resulting in reproducible radiographs. Radiographs made using XCP film holders display increased anatomical accuracy. Tooth size, morphology, and root canal length are reliably depicted. Radiographs are free of distortion. They generally have minimal superimposition of anatomical structures, like the zygomatic arch in this example. In this video, we will demonstrate how to use the RIN XCP film holder. This program is intended to give general, basic information. Once you have mastered it, you may want to modify it or learn other applications. You'll find additional details, instructions, and helpful hints in your XCP manual. You may also want to refer to radiography textbooks for more information. Let's review what happens when an intraoral x-ray is made. X-rays emitted from the tube head are uniquely modified by the patient's tooth. The x-rays then emerge from the tooth in a pattern that is distinctive for that particular tooth. This x-ray pattern is projected onto film, resulting in the radiographic image. As you can see, the position and shape of the tooth image depends on how the film is placed in relationship to the tooth and x-ray machine. The XCP film holder serves as a guide, assisting us in placing the film and x-ray machine in an optimum position to achieve the best possible radiographic image. The kit contains bite blocks, aiming rings, and indicator arms. Because the XCP film holder is composed of these separate pieces, it provides maximum adaptability for the unique needs of individual patients. Bite blocks align the film parallel to the patient's tooth. These highly adaptable parts of the XCP system are selected based on the desired projection, anterior, posterior bite wing, on the size of the film, number one film bite wing, pedo bite wing, and on convenience, for example, the disposable bite block. There are two aiming rings. One, centered over its connecting piece, is used for anterior and bite wing projections. The other, slightly offset from its connector, is used for posterior projections. There are three indicator arms. A short straight arm used for bite wing projections, an arm used for anterior projections on which the prongs project upward, and a posterior arm designed with a bend that fits around the patient's soft tissue. This bend is always positioned toward the front of the patient's mouth, permitting the arm to bend around the patient's cheek. To assemble the film holder, insert the bite block onto the two prongs of the indicator arm. Slide the aiming ring onto the other end of the arm. Flex the backing plate of the bite block and insert the film with the front side, white side, toward the ring and the orienting dot into the slot. Make sure the film is completely inserted into the slot and that it is centered within the ring. Now that it's assembled, let's see how the XCP film holder is used in the clinical setting. As we do, remember, when radiographs are made, be sure to follow all the applicable practice guidelines established by the clinic or office in which you work. Included in these guidelines are policies regarding the patient records, infection control, radiation safety, and verification of the dentist's orders. As you prepare for the XCP procedure, here are some things to keep in mind. First, be sure you've obtained all the supplies you'll need, including personal protective items, such as mask, 
eyewear, gloves, and overgloves, sterilized XCP film holders, film, a plastic bag or paper cup, plastic back towels, cotton rolls, and any appropriate labels and patient information. Prepare the operatory for the x-ray procedure. Cover or disinfect the patient chair, the x-ray tube, and the control panel. Make sure your work area is prepared with the film and film holders properly organized. Now for the procedure itself. Good morning. Have a seat. I'm going to be taking your dental radiographs today. You may want to greet the patient in the reception area. You may also want to explain the x-ray procedure. If the patient is nervous about being radiographed, describe the safety precautions used to limit radiation exposure. Emphasizing the benefit and the necessity of radiographs for providing accurate, high-quality dental care. Next, position the patient properly. Adjust the headrest so that it supports the patient's head comfortably. This will prevent artifacts that can be caused by movement of the patient's head. Ask the patient to remove eyeglasses, dentures, or any jewelry in the area. Then, begin protective procedures. Drape the patient with a lead apron and thyroid collar. Put on your mask and protective eyewear. Wash your hands and put on gloves. Quickly examine the patient's mouth to determine its specific anatomy. Such things as a small mouth, an abnormally shallow vault, crooked teeth, and bony protrusions can affect the placement of the film packet and exposure settings. If you are unsure about anatomic factors present in your patient, check with the dentist or your supervisor before you make an exposure. Set KVP and MAS following recommendations for the type of radiograph you are making. Exposure setting will be different depending on the patient age, size, or the area being radiographed. Standard exposure factors are usually posted near the control panel. If you need detailed exposure information, consult the XCP manual. Now place the film into the patient's mouth. This is the most critical step because correct film placement is essential in order to achieve a good radiographic image. The XCP manual gives detailed film placement instructions for each radiographic projection. Remember, the film holder serves as a guide to assist us in placing the film and the tube head correctly for each radiographic projection. Here we are placing the film holder for a central incisor projection. Rotate the film into the mouth and hold the end of the bite block against the incisal edges. Visually verify the film is covering the teeth we want to image. In this example of a central incisor projection, the center of the bite block is aligned with the contact point between the central incisors, and the end of the bite block is flush with or in the same plane as the buccal surfaces of the teeth. Continue to stabilize the film holder against the tooth and ask the patient to gently close. If necessary, place a cotton roll under the bite block for added patient comfort or if the film holder is unsteady. Continue to stabilize the bite block and slide the ring as close to the patient as possible, usually a distance of about one to two centimeters. Now position the tube head. First, set the vertical angle using the indicator arm as a guide. Next, set the horizontal angle using the aiming ring as a guide. If you are using rectangular collimation, be certain to align the cutouts. Stabilize the tube head so that all movement is completely stopped. Movement of the tube head during an exposure will result in a blurred image. To make the exposure, recheck the exposure factors. Step behind the protective barrier. Verify that the patient has not moved. Depress the exposure button. Continue to hold the button until the audible indicator chirp has completely stopped. If the button is released too soon, the film will be underexposed. When the exposure is complete, remove the film holder from the patient's mouth. Stabilize the film holder and slide the ring back. Gently remove the film holder from the patient's mouth. Wipe saliva from the film with a paper towel and place the exposed film into a paper cup outside the cubicle. Do not leave the film packets in the cubicle. They will be exposed to scatter radiation. When all of the films are completed, put on overgloves. Remove the lead apron clean it, and return it to its storage location.
Remove barriers or disinfect any surface that was touched or splattered. Clean and dry film holders. Sterilize the film holders according to your office infection control guidelines. Take the exposed film to the dark room for processing. Remember to handle the contaminated film in a way to prevent cross-contamination of the dark room and dispose of the contaminated film wrappers according to your office infection control guidelines. Here are some hints that will help the XCP process go more smoothly. Use the bite block to guide you in film placement. Remember to move the bite block away from the teeth. This places the film into an area of the mouth where there is more room for it and assures that the complete image of the tooth and surrounding bone is projected onto the film. Let's look at some examples of film placement. For mandibular anterior projections, center the bite block on the midline and align it in the same plane as the buccal surface of the teeth. As the patient closes, rotate the bite block into an upright position. Place the film as far away from the teeth as possible. It is more comfortable for the patient and you will image more of the alveolar bone beyond the tooth apex. Because canine teeth have such long roots, they are always centered in the radiographic image. Place the center of the bite block on the cusp tip of the canine. Align the indicator arm perpendicular to the mesial contact point, opening the mesial contact. Center the bite block on the second premolar. A lingual position of the bite block is especially important because premolar apices are frequently missed. Moving the bite block lingually will help you avoid this error. Molar projections should include the posterior extent of the tooth bearing area and require placing the film as far back in the mouth as possible. In the maxilla, the entire tuberosity should be visualized. In mandibular projections, a portion of the ascending ramus should be seen. Center the bite block on the second molar and align it with the plane of the molar teeth. The tongue often presents a problem in placing film for mandibular projections. It is best not to draw the patient's attention to the tongue. Simply place the film in front of the tongue and use the bite block to gently push the tongue back as the patient closes. These radiographs illustrate the importance of keeping the tongue behind the film. In this radiograph, the shadow of the tongue significantly degrades the image quality. It is sometimes difficult to place films for mandibular projections because the tissues are delicate and often tender. In the mandible, the film holder cannot be placed to its final position when the patient's mouth is open. Instead, hold the bite block against the occlusal edges of the teeth, but up away from the delicate soft tissues of the floor of the mouth. Then rotate it into position as the patient closes. Notice how relaxed and pliable these tissues are when the mouth is closed as compared to when the mouth is open. Gagging is a frequent problem. Although this problem occurs most commonly when posterior maxillary films are made, the gag reflex is actually stimulated when the posterior aspect of the tongue is touched. Again, film placement is the key to alleviating this problem. When placing films into the posterior maxilla, rotate the film into the patient's mouth. It is very important to keep the bite block against the teeth. This will avoid touching the back of the tongue with the film holder. Use a gentle but firm movement. Distracting the patient with conversation is also helpful. It may also help to raise the chin so that the patient's tongue drops down slightly. If you do lift the chin, adjust the headrest so the head is stable. Slight movement of the head may bring the tongue up, stimulating the gag reflex. Bite wing projections are difficult. A good quality bite wing radiograph should show the crowns of the teeth and the surrounding alveolar bone. It is critical that bite wing projections show the interproximal surfaces of the teeth without any overlapping of the adjacent tooth shadows. We describe this bite wing as having open contacts. There is a clear view of the interproximal tooth surfaces. This bite wing is unsuitable because the teeth images overlap. Open contacts are achieved when the center of the x-ray beam is directed exactly perpendicular to the interproximal contact point of the teeth. For the bite wing projection, place the film to cover the teeth you desire to image.
A premolar projection should cover the distal aspect of the canine, while a molar bite wing should cover the distal aspect of the last erupted tooth. Align the film parallel to the arch and ask the patient to close. Notice that the bite block rests on the opposite side of the arch to the teeth being radiographed. When the patient has closed, recheck the film position. You can do this in two ways. You can look to see if the aiming arm is perpendicular to the contact point you want to open. Another method is to verify that the ring is parallel to the buccal surfaces of the contact point you want to open. Always check bite wing position relative to the maxillary arch. Maxillary teeth are wider on the lingual aspect and trapezoidal in shape, making it more difficult to open these contacts. To assure that the alveolar bone of both the mandible and maxilla is projected onto the film, you must be certain that the film does not tip in the sagittal plane. Check the position of the aiming arm. It should be horizontal or have a slight, no more than five degrees superior inclination. If the patient has periodontal bone loss, it may be necessary to use a vertical projection in order to visualize the bone level. Radiographs are also made during root canal therapy to determine the position of endodontic files. The dentist relies on the accuracy of these projections to evaluate the progress of the procedure. These radiographs are usually made with one or more files in place. The Endo-Ray 2 is designed for this challenging procedure. The basket is placed over the tooth being treated. The patient lightly occludes and, like other XCP instrumentation, the Endo-Ray 2 indicator arm and aiming ring direct the placement of the tube head. The result is a high-quality radiograph accurately depicting the position of files and the progress of the root canal therapy. As you can see, film holders simplify the task of making dental radiographs. Remember to consult your XCP manual for additional information and specific details on how to use this versatile film holder system.